Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, baseball fans. This is Carl reporting live for Barstool Baseball, and this is our NL West 2023 season preview. I am joined by two of our Barstool uh, in-house experts, Chris Castellani with the Flatville and Chris Clummer in New York City. Boys, thank you for joining me. Of course, man. Absolutely. Yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, we're going to set the batting order right now. I'm going to go first. Clummer second. Castellani is going to go third. Uh, and before we get into this preview, I want to thank Rob Manfred again for sponsoring the Barstool Baseball uh, preview shows personally. Not with money, just more of like a, a vibe and an endorsement and the encouragement. Rob, we're out here. We're working for you. Um, let's get into it, guys. NL West. Of all the divisions at Barstool, this is the most neglected one because we don't have the firepower in there individually with our content guys. And they also don't have the stars like the AL West and the storylines. That's, that's a fact. No Trout, no Tani. Kind of swept under here. Yeah, I think it's a better division, though, than the AL West. I mean, mm. uh, you know, for instance, they don't have the A's. So that's a plus for that. That's something they got going for them. Uh, no, I mean, I think the NL West uh, has, I mean, the Dodgers have just been so dominant for the last decade. It's, it's hard to even, um, I, I don't know, some, maybe you're right, maybe neglect is the right word. But I think this year you're, you're starting to see that, that big margin starting to tighten. This division's getting a little closer. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a really good point. I think this is the first time, man, I mean, since I was in high school, where we can look at this division and say, are we sure the Dodgers are going to dominate this? Now, I know that they didn't win the division in uh, 21, but they won 106 games. I think that that uh, gap is getting tighter. I think that there are certain teams in the division that are starting to figure out uh, how to get it done uh, in a way that's different than how the Dodgers are doing it with, you know, obviously the, the loaded farm system and, and, and a ton of spending. So I think there's going to be a little bit more parity here um than there has been in the past which is exciting i mean you look at a team like the padres which we'll talk about they've thrown their hat in the ring i mean they are full-on going for it um you know it was similar to how the dodgers have over the last decade and i think it's going to make for a good rivalry there well that's a perfect starting point for the first topic here in division winner and we can say this could be the first year of this 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 and i agree with you the padres have gotten better and you know the dodgers certainly didn't improve at all they're in the position to make the the run at otani next offseason I'm still taking the Dodgers here. Slam dunk to win the division. Until the Padres knock the Dodgers off, it is the Dodgers division. Like you said, Chris, since you were in high school, they've been dominant. Like, I can't even remember the last time the Dodgers sucked. Uh, Manny, it, was, it was while Manny Ramirez was a Boston Red Sox. Yeah, that's true. It, it, and I'm taking the Dodgers, too. But, but it's, it's not just me, like, you know, blowing smoke up the Padres' ass. Like, it's a lot closer. I mean, last year the Dodgers won 111 games, and the Padres won 89. And now I really had to think about who I was going to pick to win. I just think that 22-game gap is too much to overcome. But the Dodgers are definitely worse than last year. And the Padres are definitely better. Like, I, if the Padres won this division, I would not be surprised. This, to me, was one of the hardest divisions to pick out of all six. Yeah, um, I'm going against the grain here. I am going with the Padres because you bring up that 22-game uh, gap. And while that's that's – obviously fair. I mean, there's a lot of ground to make up. Most of last season, they did not have Juan Soto. Most of all of last season, they did not have Xander Bogarts. And ultimately, when it mattered most in October, it was the Padres that showed up and the Dodgers that kind of fell short. I think that there's a lot of good juju going on in San Diego right now. Um, and let's, I mean, we'll talk about it a little bit later because I, I, I made a note of it. Uh, let's not forget, they played without Tatis all of last year. I mean, this is a team that even without the free agent upgrades that they made. They upgraded just by the fact that they, they will be getting one of their best players back. Um, you know, a little bit worried about the the starting pitching injuries. The Musgrove one is obviously, that's a lot of bad luck, weight room incident. But, um, you know, I think that this is the, the final form of the team that they were trying to assemble uh, in the latter part of last season that made a run to the NLCS. And, well, the Dodgers, by their standards, you know, were relatively quiet. Um, you know, I, they've when you look at what they've lost over the last five, six, you know, or not five, six years, but two, three years, even for an organization that's that stacked, I mean, they've lost multiple all-stars, MVP guys, glue guys. Um, to say that they regress, I mean, I still think they're a 95-win team uh, is a bit much. But uh, I, I like the Padres to come out of that division. Yep. Well, Chris, it's a bold pick. You're wearing a bold hat. I don't, point that out. It's a, I don't know if the hat has gotten to you, but this is, I'll just say this, the Dodgers, this is a depth year for the Dodgers where they can, they can get so many guys up from their system into the big leagues, reps, evaluate while, without really feeling so much pressure. So 
This is a dangerous year for the future of the NL West because the Dodgers are going to be running guys out there. They're going to be answering questions that they're, they're asking themselves over the next 10 years of the organization. Where's this guy go? Who, who gets traded here? A lot of player development stuff with the Dodgers. We're long-winded out of the top. I thought that'd be a slam dunk first inning. It's not. Let's see if this is a slam dunk one, two, three, second inning here. Uh, Rockies, I have dead last. Yeah, I mean, this, I mean, this, this, okay. team, this team stinks. Uh, you know, they're going to, are they going to lose a hundred games? I don't think so. I think they'll be helped by the, um, the fact that they don't need to play the National League West as much, but this is a lousy team that has no plan. Why they signed Chris Bryant a year ago makes even less sense now. They have done nothing to improve themselves from last year this year. I don't know what, I feel bad for Rockies fans because I don't know what they're doing there. It's it's very interesting, Clemmer, because you, you've brought, we talked about the A's a lot and I'm with you. I think they're a team that will lose 110 games. But they know what they are. Like, they know that they're tanking. They know that they're not trying to be good. I don't know what the Rockies, if the Rockies know what they're doing. Because you, you, you get the semblance, or it, it looks like a team that's on the verge of tanking, uh, given what they've lost the last several years. And then they'll go out and they'll sign Bryant. And there's been whispers about them getting pro far. Like, I have no idea what they're, you know, what they're attempting to do. Here. I know why they signed Chris. Brian, ask me. I'm wearing the shirt. Listen, the Rockies don't care about their fans. They care about the people that are traveling to Denver to go to Coors Field. That's why they signed Chris Bryant, so that they could pull Cubs fans to Denver for trips. But that's one that's one trip a year. I, mean, that's a, I know. That's a that's Hey, a big listen, I don't. For three games. It's a. Don't take that word for word, Clemmer. It's more of a broader uh, thing about Dick Monfort, about how cheap he is and the type of like savage business guy he is. They fill that stadium. There's, what, 30,000 a game there? They probably have top five MLB attendance for visiting fans. Up the, uh, it's not going to be Fenway and Wrigley and Yankee Stadium and Dodger Stadium and that BS, but it's probably at the very top of the next group, I would say. A lot of people love going to Coors Field. It's a cash cow. So if you're this guy, you're like, yo, we're not even coming close to beating the Dodgers or the Padres. We just hang out, have a good time here. No. Keep the people happy with Chris Bryant. Is that a bad idea? Yes. Yes. It's a waste yes. of money. It's stupid. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Hey, let me let me also round of round of applause for the boys because we just talked about the Rockies and I said before the show I was like, guys, I don't I don't know we could do this and not say one word about the Rockies. Yeah, we're covering all bases. No pun intended. Okay. Yeah. Let's get to let's get to the th- uh, third topic here. Best hitter for me. I know there's a lot of names in this division. I have to take the most proven veteran one, the most consistent one, slam dunk first ballot Hall of Famer, and the best of his age at this position. I believe. Freddie Freeman. Yeah, I mean, I can't argue too much with that. I mean, to me, it's Mookie Betts. I, I, I'm taking him as the best hitter in this. I, I guess hitter is tough. Like, is Freddie Freeman a better hitter than Mookie Betts? Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Um, but is, I'd rather have Mookie Betts a better player. I guess it's all how you want to qualify it. I mean, there's no real yeah. wrong answer here. To me, though, Mookie Betts is maybe the second best player in all of baseball. So I can't not take him here. There's uh, – man, God, there's a lot of Hall of Famers in this division. Thinking about it right now because I'm, go- I'm not – I don't disagree with either one of those picks, but I got to go with Juan Soto. I I mean, I I think that uh, you look at what Soto did last year um, in what was his down year, quote-unquote, 853 OPS and a war of five and a half. Like, that was his down season. He is still only 24 years old. Um, I think he's got an MVP season in him uh, this year, so I'm going with Soto. Over the the last two seasons combined – uh, the top number two through 10 in baseball averaged about 85 walks per season. So the highest gross amount of walks. Yeah. Juan Soto over the last two seasons has averaged 140. Unreal. Yeah. And he and doesn't strike out. And you're right. And, and they weren't pitching to him last year in Washington. So he wasn't getting any pitches to hit. That's why he had such a bad year, I think. So I think I completely agree, Chris. I think this year he's going to really rebound. Uh, best pitcher, guys. I'm just gonna make this one as easy as possible. I, I think this guy has another gear to get to. I'm gonna take Zach Gallen with the Arizona Diamondbacks, who who made a run at Jake Arrieta's. Well, I say that so. Uh, my God, <laughs> made a run at Jake's second half record from 2015 last year. Came up short. Uh, Zach Gallen's a really polished pitcher. He is as powerful as just about anybody in the league. He's kind of like a Jacob deGrom light in that it's so smooth and in balance, and he, he's, he's never really out of sync or whack, doesn't get his tits lit ever. Um, 
He also has to go see a th- a ther- or a counselor to help raise his heart rate because the game's not competitive enough for him. Like he's like, I mentally check out because I just I'm not into these moments because uh, my competitiveness is kind of I got to work on that. That is when you know you are like generationally different when you have to go see someone to get your brain right to compete because you're just that good. Gallon's Gallon's very good. Uh, my Cy Young pick in the National League is, is Julio Urias. I think he's going to have an unbelievable year. He went, led the league in ERA last year. I think led the league in wins the year before. I think this is his year he breaks out. He becomes a Cy Young award winner. So I got to take him. I mean, Gallon's great too. Yeah. You know, a guy, uh, and I like Urias a lot, um, a guy I like who I think could make this not divisional race more interesting, but potentially, given where the team is, uh, could be a really hot commodity at the deadline. I really like Logan Webb. I think Lo- I love Logan Webb's stuff. He's pitched well in the postseason in the past. Uh, I've heard the comparisons before. You know, kind of similar to Kluber uh, in, in his prime, where everything he throws moves. Uh, really good action on his two seamer. Uh, I think that he uh, definitely has emerged over the last two years as the, as the ace of that staff. I think you talk about guys who I think have another gear. I think he has another gear. Uh, I, I've liked Logan Webb a lot over the last several seasons, so I'm going to go with him. But it's a it's a very good division for pitchers. And then I'm going to st- keep with you guys for Breakout Star because I did my research, and I think you guys can have a nice little conversation here. Chris, what, Cl- Clemmer, give me what you got. Yeah, I mean, I think it's Corbin Carroll. Like, he's my Rookie yeah. of the Year pick. I, and I just think this guy, I, I, not to jump the gun, but my surprise story as well, I have him going 30-30 this year. I think wow. Corbin – Yeah, I think – Jesus I, I, fucking Christ. And I, here's why. I think that, you know, if we're, he's used to the – Have you been clock. drinking, Clemmer? Not yet. It's too early. Uh, you know, <laughs> look, at, look at the pitch clock. Uh, he's used to that in AAA. Yeah. He stole, uh, I think, 11 bases in like 33 games in AAA. So he he can run, and he's going to be used to the rules already. He's going to have a little heads up there. I think the I think the sky is the limit for this kid. I think he's really good. So uh, Corbin Carroll, I'm all in on. Man, that's 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 a good assessment of Carroll, and Carroll's my pick as well. Um, I I'm a big fan of calling up players in September. And giving them that cup of coffee before um, they, their official rookie season. Um, I mean, that I believe that's what happened with Mike Trout. We saw what happened with him. I, and Carroll last year in the small sample size played very well. Um, I mean, you know, showed a good knowledge of the strike zone. The definition of a five-tool player, tremendous speed, can hit for power. Um, the Diamondbacks believe in him, and they're giving him the keys to the car here. I mean, like, he has a big year. He is the face of their franchise, so a lot of pressure that comes with that. Um, but I think it's pressure that he's going to take on. So, yeah, I, I like Carroll as well. What did he? What was his extension exactly? Does, do you do either of you recall? Oh, I forget what it is now. Was it? I forgot. It was big. I forget the details now. I can look it up. I, I want to just throw a lob out there. I think I remember a snowman and, like, a one-something. Eight years, $111 million. Okay, yeah. Snowman with a buck, buck 11. Yeah. Huge extension. Huge. Can we call him a breakout? That's why I didn't write him down. Well, I didn't, I, I don't, I said, if you get paid 111, are you a breakout? For me, breakout meant like rookie, who's the best rookie of the division. That's just yep. how I qualified yeah. it. But I think he's definitely a breakout. I don't, I don't think, I, I'm guessing most Major League Baseball fans might not know him. He only played 30 games, 25 games last year in the majors. Yeah. So I think he's a breakout. Yeah. A yeah. lot of – okay, I'm using this. I'll talk about Ezekiel Tovar for a second. I think Corbin Carroll is going to be a great player. Love the extension. I do like what the Diamondbacks have going there. There's really only one way to compete against the Padres and the Dodgers in the next, like, seven- to ten-year window, and that's to build just, like, a great core. So them investing in Marte and Gallen and Carroll and trying to build this thing with their own guys is the right way to go about it. So I do want to give them credit for that. Now, the Rockies are good at uh, one thing in particular – and that's producing middle infielders for as long like it, all I can remember are rocky middle infielders that are just awesome. And you look at them and you're like, wow, well, the rest of the staff sucks. Every, everything else about this team stinks, except for maybe an outfielder that hits 340 every year. Uh, Zeke Tovar, and no one calls him Zeke yet, but uh, Zeke Tovar is the highest rated fielding prospect middle infield prospect, I believe, that should be in baseball in 2023. His glove is going to keep him on the field. And uh, I know this sounds bad. He's not a very good hitter at all, at all, okay? But that glove's going to keep him in the lineup, and by the end of the season, he's going to be one of those guys that ends up playing like 145 games as like a 101 OPS plus or 98 OPS plus or something, but still puts up like a four-win season. Well, he's still super young, right? I mean, he's like 20, yeah, 21 oh, years old. But he's their starting everyday shortstop, and his not. this will be the first 
Like last year, they were giving them reps. Now they're like, all right, you're the guy. See, this is what the Rockies should be doing. Like instead of wasting time, money, everything on Chris Bryant, like let's invest that into your scouting department, into into your kind of maybe international scouting things like that, uh, signing bonuses, and getting and putting guys like Tovar in positions to maybe succeed or at least earn on the job. I mean, I think that's the smartest way to do it. I have no problem with them playing him every day this year, as long as they give him the real keys to the car and be like, look, you're the guy all year. Go for it. Have confidence. Try it. I got regression here. Next topic, sixth inning here, whatever the hell we're calling these things. Uh, regression, I have Daniel Bard, and I'm going to ask Clemmer to explain why what, he's, he's due to regress, right? He's getting older, but his career is so – I can't really follow a natural trend with him. He's such a bizarre career. Of course, Red Sox reliever, they made him a starter. He's, he couldn't handle it. He, he went away for a few years. Now he's come back. You wonder, even though he's like, what, 37 years old, is his arm fresh because he hasn't pitched that many innings? I, so I, I can't – I never get a handle on Bart. His career is too odd. Well, congratulations to him on getting that paycheck anyways. I just know that older relievers uh, – wild thing, am I crazy? Uh, older no, no, no. I'm not... <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, uh, who do you have? Who do you guys have? I have Matt Carpenter. I mean, he slugged 700 for the Yankees yeah, last year. That's a good year. pick. That's, not, he's not going to be good yeah. this year. And, you know, you look at the years before he was in, you know, with the Yankees, he was horrible. Like, he was a horrible, yeah. horrible player with the Cardinals. I, I, I'm guessing maybe it would be somewhere in the middle, but he's no spring chicken either. Talk about Daniel Bard. Carpenter's pretty old, too. And he seems like a great guy, but I, I just don't know if the Padres, they signed him to a two-year deal, I believe. It didn't seem like the smartest play to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he went nuts with the Yankees last year. Um and I think that obviously that's, but yeah, two years was surprising. I mean, he bet on himself. Like he was, he was basically out of the league until uh, you know yeah. Yankees gave him a shot last year. Um, when I, I feel like this preview is going to make it seem like I'm really down on the Dodgers. I'm not. Like they can win the World Series, but when I say regression, I'm talking regression relative to career performance. And Clayton Kershaw has never had a bad season. His career ERA is 2.48. Like that's insane. Um. He's his worst season was his rookie year. He had a four two six ERA. After that, his worst season was a three five five, which is still, I mean, ERA plus of one nineteen. Not exactly slouching it. Um, I'm gonna go with him though. I think f- one of these years with all the injuries he's had, eventually it's gonna catch up to him at a certain point. And I love Kershaw. He's one of the greatest pitchers of our lifetime. But um, yeah, I, I think I think this is the year we see him lose that ace status. And you could say he's lost it before, but every time, like, like you know, he started the All Star game last year. Like he's still pretty damn good. I think finally the injuries catch up to him, uh, sadly, this year. And uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if this is his final season in the big leagues. You lose a lot of money betting against Clayton Kershaw. Uh, I don't I don't know if uh, I mean, you're right though, Chris. One of these days it's gonna it's gonna happen. His velocity gets lower and lower each year. But oh man, I. I I can't. I, I don't have the guts to pull the trigger on that yet because until Kershaw. I get. It. And, and for the record, he he's not going to be bad. It's just we're talking again regression relative to career performance. I think eventually he won't be Kershaw anymore. I think right when he goes to retire, the Rangers are going to be in that sweet spot where some of these big deals aren't working out, and they're going to need a big year of attendance, and the president's going to go to Kershaw and be like, hey, come on home to Highland Park, yeah. and we'll give you $30 million for one season. I can feel that. I can taste it. Not a crazy prediction. Yeah. Uh, surprise story. Here's a prediction for you. Now, we, we call this category surprise. And then we talk about it, and then our social guys clip it, and it goes out in social, and we just get called morons. The category is surprise. The point of this category is to get you to be like, wait, what? Because you are surprised. Uh, so here is my surprise prediction for the season. That's a caveat. Now, that's not going to be in the clip that makes it to social. This will be. Here's my surprise prediction for the season. Okay? Call me crazy. I don't care. This gets out to South California. People want to beat me up. Whatever. I have the Padres missing the playoffs. Wow. A team that's consistently re- – yeah, yeah, bad depth, man. Bad depth. Yeah, that's crazy, Carl. Bad roster construction. Hey, who, unloaded the farm system. Who do you have making it then? Like, who are your team – who are the six teams? I just – I the Dodgers? Yep. Obviously. Yep. I have a couple teams flagged as sleepers. Now, three teams are going to come from the NL East. Right. So okay. Okay. Right. So the Cardinals. The, the Cardinals. Game. Okay. So the, obviously the Cardinals, and then obviously the Dodgers, as I pick them. Mm-hmm. Now lurking behind with like the Padres over 162 games, you guys don't give a shit about the Milwaukee Brewers. 
Yeah, I can sit here and tell you. I can sit here and tell you how much I like the Arizona Diamondbacks this year. And you guys will say, "Well, they finish better than the Padres." No, but they're tougher to compete against. And the Rockies are still a very difficult place to play on the road. I know there's less less interdivision games. I can make compelling arguments for why the Marlins can win like 86 games and oh. sneak in there. Oh, I heard Come about on, Clemmer. I heard about that. This is the fucking surprise part of the show, and you're going to sit here and bust my balls I, even I'm, after I'm I made the caveat that the whole I'll, point I'll, of it was to say, I'll "Here's say why." Surprised. I just don't know okay. who that other team is. I don't know who that sixth team is. If not the Padres, then whom? You know, that's the, that's the problem. It's, they think the American League has more balance, but the National Are League Are you is, telling me I can't cheer for the Cubs to be the sixth best team in the National League this year? You can cheer for them, but it's not likely to happen. But the Cubs are a good example, though. The Cubs are kind of in that middle tier. Maybe if someone drops down, the Cubs yeah. sneak in there. I, I, don't, I don't know, but the Padres have so much talent. Okay, so then let's do this with the talking point then. Do you think it's that crazy to say the Padres won't miss the playoffs? Yes. To be clear, both panelists here, you guys agree. Yes, you're crazy for saying that, yes. Yeah, I think it's pretty wild. <laughs> I would, things would have to go horrifically wrong for them. I know. You know what, actually? This is disrespectful to Manny Machado and Juan Soto and Brett Sullivan. Great catcher. This is disrespectful to a lot of people in what I'm doing here. But I hated – the Xander deal. Okay. I hate what they're doing with the middle infield. I don't the, – the, Tatis Jr. is going to go on a war path, but there's no culture there. And there's this fight – like, him, who's the, who is the big guy in that clubhouse? Like, it's, it's just a bunch of Hall of Fame mercenaries. And I, at the end of the day, it's hard to care about each other like that. And I think that matters at the end of the day. Now, you, they should be the, they should the be the sixth team in. Because he can't – because he can't pl- – he can't play – he can't play multiple positions in the field. He's, He's going to be a DH in like six years, five years. He's just he will DH. He, five hundred of his plate appearances will come from a stationary position, either at first base or as a DH, and they're going to pay him. How much did jo- How much did Josh Bell just get paid this year? Sixteen and a half million. Yeah, one year. Yeah, one year six million. Yeah. Yeah, for like higher end offensive guaranteed production value. Like that's what I I don't. They're going to end up paying Xander Bogarts like $27 million to be playing a corner infield spot with significantly less production to above average. Do you think I'm crazy for this, Clemmer? Should I sh- this is a bad topic for me, huh? Am I going to get killed for this? I mean, this? the Bogarts deal is definitely an overpay, so I, can, I guess I can kind of yeah. – but I think for this year, I think, I think when you said Hall of Fame mercenaries, I think you're kind of proving our point. Chris and I's point is like, no, these guys are really good. They're Hall of Famers. Sure individually but the great teams play together the great teams play together what made the yankees dynasty the dynasty is they played together the braves went to 13 straight division championships because they had culture the 77 I'm telling you that yankees hated each other and they still won world series like i don't think you need it's to, billy martin you that's Kumbaya. billy martin you fuck don't be bringing billy martin clubs in here and wave them around and talking about their culture as some sort of standard Sorry, now we're getting mean. I apologize for that. Billy Martin's a great manager. Uh, sometimes the best players don't make the best teams, Clummer. That's my point. And that's the only point I was trying to make with this, that I don't want to anoint the Padres as being so good just because of their play. I want to you see the like, team come you together. You sound like one of the scouts in Moneyball right now. Like one of those old men who are just like saying nonsense Perfect. and Billy Bean's yelling at them. <laughs> I, 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 I'm like – Totally happy being that guy. <laughs> for the purpose, hey, for the purposes of a of a preseason discussion about the NL West and whether or not the Padres can collapse. Everybody's sitting here talking about whether or not the Padres can. Are they going to take over the Dodgers this year? They've never done it. What the fuck are we doing? They've never take like they. I'm going to calm down. What do you have? What's your surprise? Uh, mine's the Corbin Carroll thirty thirty. What's what's Castellanos? Um, mine is biggest surprise. I brought him up earlier. Um, I like this pitcher a lot, but I think his team stinks. And I think that they have talked about a team with bad juju given the off season they just had. I think Logan Webb at age 27 becomes a very hot commodity at the trade deadline. And I think that the Giants ship them. Uh, they have tried to build through free agency the last few years. They have failed spectacularly. Um, and I, I just don't think they're going to be very good. I think their roster is thin. I don't think they have a very good offense. I'm not saying they're entering full-on rebuild mode necessarily. This is a team that won 107 games two years ago. But um, I think they're going to need to unload some assets at the deadline if they want to get competitive in what is admittedly a very tough division. I think Logan Webb may be uh, one of those pieces that gets dealt to a contender at the deadline. I think the Giants are definitely still in that uh, 
re, not like rebuild mode, but they just know they're not going to do anything, and they're well, smart they, they, enough. The off season they had was a disaster. Yeah. Well, it's tough when they. I the Correa deal is yeah. a great deal to set them for the long term. I don't yeah. think that would have materially changed how successful the Giants would be this year. I think that when that Correa deal fell apart, though, they panicked and they felt they had to do something. So they spent that money on a bunch of different guys, like Conforto, a few other guys. And I don't know if that was the best. It certainly didn't set them well up to the future. It kind of was just, I felt like kind of a band-aid on this year. I don't know. They're an odd team. I, I think they're better than Diamondbacks, but I don't have them making the playoffs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What do, we, uh, what do we have here? I think worst. Is that our next category? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is open-ended. It can be like worst anything. The point of this is just like something bothers you and you want to talk about it. Um, I say worst fans generally. Just like the worst fans. I don't know. Worst fans. The Rockies fans don't exist. Diamondbacks fans don't exist. Dodgers fans are always beating up Giants fans. Giants fans are always getting beat up. Giants fans are endearing in some respect. A hundred out of a hundred Giants fans be like, you can't miss our garlic fries. They're just cute. Like, they're cute. And uh, there's so much fighting going on in this division. And I mean, like, physical brawling. The fans. They beat each other up in parking lots all the time. uh, And I think that's the worst. Yeah, that's not great. Um, my worst is I, I try to do a different free agent signing with every division. And the worst free agent signing this offseason, besides Matt Carpenter, maybe is Ross Stripling. Uh, this was another one of those Giants panic deals they made after they signed, uh, didn't, couldn't get Correa. They signed Ross Stripling to a two year, $25 million deal. And I mean, Ross Stripling was, you know, he was okay last year. Uh, but the year bef- the years before that, he was kind of terrible. Um, looking here, like, you know, he had a 301 ERA last year, but before that was a 480, and the year before that was a 584. I mean, this is not a very good pitcher, and to, to give this guy $25 million he's, seems insane. Yeah, I, I, the Giants' MO has been they, they believe that they can turn around almost any pitcher. And in fairness, look, I mean, you look at what they did with, you know, DiScalfani and Gossman, and, you know, Rodon was, you know, already in, in good shape when he signed there last year. I think that their belief is that they can turn around starting pitching. Uh, he was not bad last season, but I'm with you. I didn't know he got two years. I thought it was just one. Two years, 25 is crazy. Um, my uh, my worst, I went with worst judgment and went with Fernando Tatis Jr. Um, I think you talk about uh, all-time bag fumbler. Now, he got his money, but uh, the guy went from probably the most marketable player in baseball for a short time to, I mean, you know, you had the, the motorcycle accidents, plural, the PEDs. Now, I'm, I'm actually still huge on Tatis. I think Tatis has a monster year, and I'll, quickly people are going to forget that, like, or people, quickly people are going to remember this guy is a generational talent. But um, I'm guessing 2022 he probably could have done without. That was a, a whole lot of nonsense for, you know, and it, and it hurt that team. I mean, an 89-win team that was lost in the NLCS, who knows what they could have done if he was playing shortstop for him. So, yeah, that one was, uh, that was, that was a rough year for, for Nando. And I can argue against myself here where I had said the Padres won't make the playoffs. I could, you could also easily say Tatis goes on a rampage tour and blows through the MVP. Like you could see based on how much trash. Well, I shouldn't say that because he won't play. He's 50 game suspension. MVP type numbers when he gets back. Yeah. If he was, if he could play this whole season, I would have picked him to be MVP. I think he misses 30 games to start the year. Um, and then, then he'll be back in that lineup. Mm-hmm. How crazy is that um, lineup going to be? You have Soto, just like Soto, Machado, Tatis, Bogarts. Bogarts. Like, that is a wild. Like, it's going to be a wild lineup to watch every night. I'm excited to watch those late inning games. I think they have, the Padres have a great announcing crew, too. Don Arcillo is yeah. great. So, like, I can't wait late at night to watch those games and watch the Padres just mash. It's going to be a lot of fun this year. I'm excited. Imagine if they don't make the playoffs. It would be crazy. <laughs> um, it would be so surprising. Based be. on how good the lineup is, you would say it would be so surprising if they didn't make the playoffs. I would say exactly that, um, Carl. All right, last one. Biggest asshole. I screwed this up. I read off the wrong answer. I, I guess I fucked this up, so I have to come up with one on the spot. Biggest asshole. I guess just historically when I think of asshole in the NL West, like I think of Tommy Lasorda, but I mean that in an endearing way. I just mean it in an endearing way. Just a guy who and, – and a lot of his clips go viral in that weird pocket of baseball internet where, like, yeah. people – look at this clip of Ted Williams talk about hitting. Look at this clip of Tony Gwynn stealing second base. Like, Tommy Lasorda mic'd up clips go viral, and that's because he's a fucking legend. When we say asshole, we mean it positively. The graphic 
on this presentation is screwed up, and that's because I screwed up, so I will shut up. Uh, yeah, I, I picked that tease for the reasons we talked about earlier. Um, you know, he's really got to show a lot more maturity. Uh, maybe he'll do it this year. Uh, I, obviously, like, you know, if Carl's prediction is right where they don't make the playoffs, I think that tease is a big reason why. Like, maybe he, ha- he doesn't come back very strong. So, um, you know, if you're looking for kind of reasons why the Padres bubble might burst, Tatis might be that reason, but he also might be the guy that brings him to the World Series. Yeah, mine, I went, again, uh, meant it in an endearing way because I think of guys who are just, like, purposefully assholes on the baseball field. And I think a lot of people forget this guy plays in this division. You can't you can't go bigger than Madison Bumgarner. Um, Mad Bum, you know, I mean, every, you know, guys hitting home runs into the ocean, he gets pissed. Guys don't run to first hard enough, he gets pissed. The umpire checks his hand for uh, sticky substances, he gets pissed. He's always, I mean it in the best way possible. He's always been a dirtbag, and that's why, dude, that's why he's a bulldog. That's why he's a legend. Um, struggled a lot with the Diamondbacks, but uh, I feel like we're good for one or two Madison Bumgarner tantrums a year, and I'm all, I'm, I'm here for it. And that's where we're at in the life cycle of being Madison Bumgarner fans. It's a perfect. It's it's perfect to be honest. Yeah, he won't make the Hall of Fame, but he's going to go down as like one of the greatest competitive pitchers ever. But it's funny. But he won't. He won't make Cooperstown. Is it? No. Now here's where here's where I think he here's here's where I think he could. Here's where I know I know he won't. Listen, he's not going to get elected the way you understand it. But these stupid veteran fucking commit I shouldn't say it like that, but the veteran <laughs> committees that come around when Madison Bumgarner's, you know, like at the in hospice care fifty years <laughs> yeah, from now. Right, right. Like that's why I would say don't say never say never, because the mythology of his October run, let me ask this extra audience question. Madison Bumgarner in October or Tin Lincecum at his best? Oh. Bumgarner in October over any pitcher I've ever seen. Yeah. Bumgarner in twenty fourteen yeah was the greatest run I've ever seen by a pitcher. I just checked. He has 134 wins, so I think it would be tough for him to get in. Oh, no, he won't get in. He will not. He won't get in. But Yeah, but like, but Bumgarner in October was it was amazing. Um, but when's to come at his peak, though? I think I was unhittable, too. I mean, you're talking about that's a, that's a, that's a pretty good one, too. Yeah, and don't forget they had Matt Cain in there, too, for a minute. I know. <laughs> yeah. And the highest paid guy was Barry Zito, and he, <laughs> he was the worst of them. Yeah. Well, not when they won in 2010. Barry Zito made some quality starts in the playoffs mm-hmm. for them. So I'll, I'll pitch Verlander in the uh, World Series that year. Do you remember that game? <laughs> yes, Carl. I remember. <laughs> sure does. I remember it very well. Thank you for asking. Hey, this is the Barstool Baseball uh, 2023 NLS preview. I am Carl, joined by Clemmer and Castellani today. Thank you guys so much. I want to shout out uh, Clemmer for using this opportunity to shit on Ross Stripling signing. Guy gets two years, 20-something million at the end of his career, and you want to call it the word. That's a guy who you should be lifting up to be like, congratulations for being a veteran and getting a bag of money and all that stuff. Nope, you want to talk about how much it sucks, Clemmer. Don't ever change. Um, you are going to Miami for Mets opening day. Is that correct? Yeah, I don't know when this is coming out, but uh, we, uh, Frank. Before then. Frank, the tank, and I will be in Miami for Mets opening day. Hopefully we'll be able to give you a report, Carl. Uh, maybe after that first game, maybe we'll jump on with you and kind of talk about the experience there. Would be delightful. Uh, I appreciate you guys going down there, even though that sounds like an amazing trip. But I mean like that from a general sense as a baseball fan. Uh, I, li- I like when the boys are out. And then, obviously, Kay Solana, your home opener next week, April 6th. Some more stuff coming on that. Everybody subscribe to our channel so we can keep doing more of this and have conversations throughout the season. Uh, it's, easy as- it's easy for us, so hopefully it's easy for you guys. Until then, we'll talk to you guys next time.